the twin viruses of corona and fascism still rage across the world. And there are still those fighting to prevent and slow their spread, though many governments are not fully doing their part in this struggle. However, there is still a time and a place for rest and relaxation. This is Lockdown Bard. Now, this week's poem is entitled A Letter to London. It starts off fairly gay sounding, but unfortunately, it doesn't really end that way. You'll see what I mean. Go, my letter, to London, since thou seest the greatness of my sore trouble. Tell my anxiety, be not slack. Go now and hasten. Think of the hurt I have suffered of late. Quicken thy bearer's pace. Be not long, if thou canst help it. Make no stop till thou seest Finnegan. Happy for thee to go see him, O little sheet with rude tidings, And that he should clasp thee for my sake, And he gazing on thy form. O oh, that I might reach in the guise of a bird, Or like a star of the air, Across the mighty, deep, white-cloaked and chilly, So that I might come behold him. As it is for thee a consummation to reach him. Quickly, when he has opened thee to him who is dearest to me among the nobles of the assembly, speak thou yonder my message. While he is opening thee, remember among the first things to give him my greeting and my love, which was bound to him from the first day. The second thing thou must declare to McCarty, my friend, is this bitter plight wherein I am myself, though it is a harsh tale to me and to him. Tell him quickly how I am tossed from one neighbour to another, like an apple from wave to wave, enduring poverty and oppression. Tell him that, though eager my search, in no place have I found kindness from them for nearly a year, an unreasonable injury to me. I do not perceive their devotion to me, the clan Carty, worthy of honour. They are men like other men. If they are gales, I see it not. For sail or without sail, I cannot get a mighty change one sod from any of them. All my importance is at an end. If he treats me as they do, I think my fate is evil. I have lost the noble clan here, and I am not sure of him. O oh, letter of tardy words to the son of Donacha, son of Donal, that I have forsaken the men of Ireland for him, though he is the last to be tested. If Finnegan has, or even if he has not, room for a single house in Finton's land, let him relieve my hardship, if he will, for love or for friendship's sake, or because I trust in him, or because of the art to which I am fitted, or because of the persecution that I have borne on his account. Let him not force me to journey hence in stormy weather across the to tossing, dark, misty sea to meet him from the hills of Western Ireland. It were enough to stay me from travelling, even if my spirits were nimble, if he deems it painful to my person, that I lack clothing and money. In the East, I should understand no one, and they would not understand my speech, though all too little is what I make by it. Yet my art is better in Ireland. Which of the men of Bregia can be trusted? Should Finnegan forsake me, 
if he deny me, I set my hand to it, that I will never seek a friend's love. I leave the means to himself. To a man like him, a hint is enough. Let him justify my hopes one after another. Let him write to me as it is fitting. O oh, letter from Finnegan's hand, thou art the herb that shall heal the sting of my oppression. Certify thy unfailing kindness by surpassing speed. Come to me and come quickly. Now, as I said, this poem at the beginning seems a little bit gay. But, disappointingly, this is a poem written by a bard to his patron, asking for help, and it is not uncommon for a poet or a bard, when writing to their patron, especially when asking for help of some kind, to begin with flattery and professions of a deep love. And this is to win their patron's favour and help to persuade the patron to give the help that is sought. That is not, however, discounting the idea that I'll be blunt, they may have been fucking anyway, but it does change the light in which we would perceive such professions just a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed that poem. Thank you for listening. Because you're gay. <laughs>